everyone and welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will be learning the line by line explanation of the poem The Laburnum Top by Ted Hughes, followed by the exercise that we will be solving in the end. I will also be telling you about the poetic devices at the end of the explanation part. So stay tuned and let's begin. The theme of the poem is mutual relationship between the laburnum tree and the goldfinch bird and how it beautifully expresses our lives in general. We all know how our lives get dull and monotonous and boring until that one person or that one thing that gives us utmost happiness comes back into our lives. It talks about the dependability of not just us human beings on each other but the nature and its beings also. So just as we see in our lives as well, how our grandparents get so cheerful and happy on seeing us whenever we go to visit them at their house on a vacation or any festival. It fills their life with a sense of purpose, happiness, joy and a different kind of energy altogether. And on leaving them, they go back to the same mundane lives that is a life which lacks excitement or enjoyment. You can also relate it to the time when you met your friends and family after the lockdown. So this relationship is very well represented by the life of the bird and the tree. The poem is divided into three stanzas without a set rhyme scheme. The poet here describes how the tree felt on coming of the goldfinch bird and how the tree's life state changes once the bird comes and starts to rustle and chirp and fills its life with a sense of purpose and excitement. And once it leaves, the tree goes back to being dull and silent again. So without further ado, let's move on to the first stanza and really study about these stages in detail. The laburnum top is silent, quite still. In the afternoon yellow September sunlight, a few leaves yellowing, all its seeds fallen. In the first stanza, the word laburnum top refers to a short tree with hanging branches, yellow flowers and poisonous seed. And the word silent means still as if dead. The poet describes the tree as lifeless during the daytime in September. It says that the tree is silent and still as there are no rains or winds during the day. The word yellow signifies how beautiful the tree appears due to its yellow flowers and still yellowing leaves. That is, the leaves are still in the process of yellowing or becoming yellow colored as the autumn season is approaching. The term yellow September sunlight signifies that the scene is set during the daytime, that is in the afternoon during the September month, that is the month when the fall begins. And how the sunlight being yellow in color as well intensifies the beauty of the tree. Do you know why the yellow color is so mesmerizing and used time and again to represent the tree? It signifies beauty because of the bright yellow flowers. It signifies silence because there was no rain or wind at the time. And it signifies death because of the fallen yellowing leaves, representing the fall time or the autumn time. Therefore, the first stanza clearly depicts how miserable the tree was before the bird goldfinch arrives. Let's move on to the second stanza. Till the goldfinch comes with a twitching chirrup, a suddenness, a startlement at a branch end, then sleek as a lizard and alert and abrupt, she enters the thickness and a machine starts up of chitterings and a tremor of wings and trillings. The whole tree trembles and thrills. It is the engine of her family. She stokes it full, then flirts out to a branch end. 
showing a bad face identity mask in the second stanza the word goldfinch refers to a small singing bird which has yellow feathers on its wings the word twitching refers to sudden abrupt movement or jerk the word chirrup means repeated high pitched noise made by the bird the word startlement means sudden shock or amazement the word sleek means smooth the word abrupt means rapid the word chitterings means chatting sound of the baby birds the term tremor of wings means involuntary vibrations of wings the word trillings means chirruping sound the word tremble means shakes the word thrill means sudden feeling of excitement the term engine of the family is used for the goldfinch bird the word strokes means to add fuel here the word flirts means abrupt or jerkily movement and the word bard means striped the poet says that the tree is still and silent until the goldfinch birds arise and sits on one of its branches making high pitched sounds which causes a sudden amazement or movement at the end of the branches she then enters the tree very smoothly but abruptly with alertness like a lizard as if she's constantly on the lookout for the predators who might be searching for the next opportunity they get to attack its chicks as soon as she enters the bark of the tree the little ones start making noise and chitterings just like the engine makes when it starts the machine and on seeing their mother arrive they start flattering their wings in excitement and joy as they know that the mama bird has come with food this makes the entire tree shake she then adds fuel that is feed the baby birds which in turn make the baby birds really energetic and active and right after that she moves towards the end of the branch where she sits and rests hiding behind the flowers so no predator sees her let's move on to the last stanza of the poem then with eerie delicate whistle chirrup whisperings she launches away towards the infinite and the laburnum subsides to empty the word eerie means strange in a frightening or mysterious way the word launches means flies the word infinite means the sky the term whistle chirrup means gentle whispering like chirrup sound made by the bird and the term subsides to empty means become still and silent again so after some time the goldfinch makes gentle whispering like chirruping sound and suddenly flies away into the infinite sky hence leaving the laburnum tree silent and lifeless again with this we have come to the end of the explanation part let's move on to the poetic devices used in the poem the first poetic device used here is simile which is a direct comparison between the two words using the words like or as it is given by an example in the third line of the second stanza which goes as sleek as a lizard here the poet has compared the smooth alert but abrupt movement of the bird to a lizard the second poetic device used here is metaphor and unlike simile metaphor is indirect comparison between the qualities of two things and a word or a phrase is used to represent it it is given by an example using a phrase from the seventh line of the second stanza so in the phrase engine of the family the word engine represents the mother that is goldfinch and the word machine here represents the noise made by the chicks the third poetic device used here is alliteration which is repetition of a consonant sound at the beginning of two or more consecutive words given by the example so 
in the second line of the first stanza the words september sunlight are an example of alliteration some other examples of alliteration in the poem are in the second line of the second stanza the words a suddenness a startlement the last example of alliteration in the poem is sixth line of the second stanza which says trees trembles and thrills the fourth poetic device used in the poem is onomatopoeia that is a word that is formed from the sound which is similar to it the examples of this poetic device are as follows so in the first line of the second stanza the words twitching chirrup and the fifth line of the second stanza the words chitterings and trillings the fifth and the last poetic device of this poem is transferred epithet an epithet is a word or a phrase which describes the quality of someone or something therefore transferred epithet is an adjective that describes the quality of something which is transferred to another thing it is given with an example from the last line of the second stanza which says showing her bard face identity mask so the adjective bard that is striped is used for the bird here when it actually represents the flowers of the laburnum tree that falls down like bars also the goldfinch bird has stripes or black spots on its head so when it hides from the predators behind the flowers the shadow of the flowers conceals her face as well as her identity hence it is used as an identity mask for the bird therefore the adjective bard that is used for the flowers here is transferred and applied to the bird so let's move on to the back exercise the first question goes as what laburnum is called in your language so in hindi language the laburnum tree is called amaltas question 2 goes as which local bird is like the goldfinch so the indian lutino ring neck is like the goldfinch the first question under the title think it out goes as what do you notice about the beginning and the ending of the poem so at the beginning and the end of the poem one thing that remained same was the dull and silent lifeless life of the tree second question goes as to what is the bird's movement compared what is the basis for the comparison so in the third line of the second stanza the movement of the goldfinch is compared to the smooth yet abrupt and alert movement of a lizard the third question goes as why is the image of the engine evoked by the poet as we all know that the engine is the source which runs the machine and without the engine the machine cannot work here the bird that is goldfinch is the engine which feeds her family and provides energy and life to her chicks who wouldn't have last longer if it wasn't for the bird goldfinch The fourth question goes as what do you like the most about the poem So personally speaking for me the relationship between the laburnum tree and the goldfinch bird is most beautiful of all the comparisons It shows how dependable both laburnum tree and the bird were on each other not just for their lives but the sense of joy that both of them brings into each other's lives The fifth question goes as what does the phrase her bard face identity mask mean So here the poet describes that the falling flowers which looked like rods acted as the face identity mask covering and concealing the identity of the bird which was hiding from the predators The first question under the title note it down goes as first note down the sound words so here the words 
twitching, chirrups, chitterings, trillings, whispering are the sound words. Second, the movement words given in the poem are comes, enters, starts up, flirts out, launches away, tremble, subside. Third, the dominant color in the poem. So the most dominant color in the poem was the color yellow, which represented beauty, silence and death. Let's move on to the first question under the title list the following. The first question goes as list the following words which describe sleek, alert and abrupt. So the word sleek here is represented by the word lizard. The word alert here is represented by the word machine and the word abrupt is represented by suddenness. The second question goes as list the following words with the sound ch as in chart and tr as in trembles in the poem. So the answer goes as the words goldfinch, branch, chitterings, chirrup, trillings, twitching and tremors represent the sound ch and tr. The last question under the title list the following goes as list the following other sounds that occur frequently in the poem. So the ing sound used in the words twitching, chitterings, wings, trillings and whisperings occur frequently in the poem. Thanks for watching. If you like our video and you want to see more content from Pratibha tutorials, Please hit like and subscribe to our channel.